All right, folks. So I just wanted to do a quick video on the Trustfire T3 flashlight. In this video, we're going to do an unboxing. We're going to do a spec rundown, and we're going to include some beam shots. If this sounds like something that you're interested in, why don't you go grab yourself a nice cold one, come on back, and then we'll get started. Before we get started, I did want to say that I was contacted by Trustfire, and they asked me if I'd be interested in reviewing some of their new flashlights. I like reviewing flashlights and like making YouTube videos, so of course I said yes. So one of the flashlights they sent me is this T3. It's a max 1000 lumen flashlight that runs off of an 18650 lithium ion battery or two CR123 lithium ion batteries. Just to be clear, I was sent this flashlight free of charge in exchange for this video review. Looking at the front of the box, you can see some key stats. 1000 max lumens, on its lowest setting it can run for 30 days. It can shine for 137 meters or has a 137 meter throw. 4600 candela and has drop resistance of one meter. It's also IPX8 rated, which I believe is 30 minutes underwater. Okay, let's get this bad boy open and see what it ships with. The first thing that we notice is it ships with an instruction manual, or an instruction pamphlet, I guess I should say. It's a labeled trust fire, and then I think it says subscribe to the Smoke and Ape channel, but I'm not entirely sure. It also comes with some sort of warranty card. Opening it up, you can see that it's in, it looks to be Chinese to me, but my Chinese isn't that good, and English. And then we can take a look at some of the specifications right here. So we can see the flashlight has two modes, mode one and two. A high output of 1000 lumen, a middle output of 200 lumens, a low output of 5 lumens, and then it has a strobe of 1000 lumens and an SOS mode of 200 lumens. The flashlight ships with the typical accessories. Here you have a holster or a belt pouch. It also comes with a lanyard. I don't really use lanyards, but some people love them, so it's a good thing they include it. The holster has a velcro enclosure, a belt loop, and a D-ring, giving you multiple attachment options. The flashlight does not come with a battery, so you'll have to supply that yourself. More on that later. It has a pretty good traction plan with knurling on the body of the flashlight, has a crenulated bezel, and it has a tail cap, or a tail clicky as they're called. One of the tail is the mounting options for the lanyard. It also has a pretty rugged or rigid pocket clip or belt clip. The flashlight will not do a tail stand. Given this flashlight can generate a thousand lumens, I would have expected a little bit bigger heat sinks. This flashlight does get pretty hot at a thousand lumens. Let's go ahead and open it up. The threading seems to work pretty well with deep cuts. Let's go ahead and put a battery in. We're going to go ahead and use a battery from Trustfire that shipped with the E3R, another Trustfire flashlight that I reviewed. It's a rechargeable 18650 lithium ion battery with integrated circuit protection. The flashlight does have reverse polarity protection, which will prohibit malfunctions in the event that you install the battery backwards. Installing the battery is a straightforward process. Just discussing the types of batteries you can use in this flashlight, the number one recommended is a rechargeable lithium ion battery with protection board, and they list the Trustfire 18650. The second is a lithium battery, which is a CR123A. Note, these are not rechargeable CR123As. Rechargeable CR123As operate at 3.7 volts, which could cause you a little bit of problem when lined up in series. Next, you will see rechargeable lithium ion battery, and it does not list protection circuit board. So this leads me to believe that the flashlight does not have integrated circuit protection, preventing over or under charging of your battery. So that's a little bit of an issue, and you see the word caution listed in availability. Finally, we see lithium iron phosphate battery, which is forbidden. And this probably has something to do with the amperage and the lower voltage that that battery operates under. So just make sure you're using the right battery, and make sure you're using a battery with a protection circuit board. With the flashlight bezel completely tightened, you are in turbo mode, or mode 1. You loosen the bezel one quarter turn to get to mode 2, which has different options. Mode 2 does have a memory option, but you have to leave the flashlight off for 5 seconds in between use in order for the memory mode to take effect. 
Here we are using the 5 lumen mode to read a map in darkness. It does seem a little bit dimmer than a typical 5 lumen flashlight, but maybe it's just the conditions or the charge of the battery. The flashlight can be momentarily activated with a half press of the tail cap, or you can turn it on completely with a full press of the tail cap. As mentioned, you switch between mode 1 and mode 2 by adjusting the bezel. The flashlight needs to be turned off and on to switch between settings, unless you're using the half tail cap presses. Switching between the settings is a little bit cumbersome and takes some getting used to. Here we are outside, doing some beam shots as I walk around. With the medium setting of 200 lumens, it's a little bit bright for your typical EDC, making this more of a tactical flashlight, I guess. And one thing I would say is the jump between the lowest setting of 5 lumens to the medium setting of 200 seems like a pretty big jump. Maybe there should be about a 100 lumen setting in between. The throw of the flashlight is pretty impressive, and it illuminates the area. It's very floody. Anyhow, I'll include a link below where you can pick this flashlight up. It runs for $39.95 on Amazon Shipped, and that's with Prime. I did want to say thanks to Trustfire for sending this flashlight for review, and I want to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Thanks, folks.